Hello and welcome to a discussion on the topic religion and the idea of power. At the very outset, let me state that both power and religion are two of the most significant foundations of human life and existence. But at the same time, let me also state that it is not so easy to study these two because both these aspects are arbitrary as well as let us say paradoxical. Perhaps this is the reason why arriving at specific definitions of the two even in this date has become quite a difficult task. However, for the time being and for the sake of simplification of our study, let me just provide you with a brief description of the two separately so that the understanding of this module becomes lucid and clearer. Coming to religion, let me state that the idea of religion does not only imply the belief in God, rather the idea of religion also encompasses the gateway with the help of which man copes up with life's adversities, finds hope in hopelessness and therefore derives a sense of meaning attributed to his existence on earth. On the other hand, power is an element found in all human relationships that also has an influence on the character of a society. What gives power a sacred undertone is that it is both desirable on one hand as well as daunting on the other. You see power and social power can often be used in place of one another. This is because both these terms stand for the chance given to people to do things under coercion, consensus and consent. This is what actually happens in the case of religious power. Now, coming to the definition of religious power, let me say that religious power is nothing but the chance of getting people to do things by making reference to realities or to meaning that surmounts the idea of what is generally believed to be human. Here let me tell you that religious power should not anyhow be mixed up with what is known as power of religion because power of religion denotes on the other hand the power of religious functionaries, institutions and organizations. Now, how power is to be exercised depends on the connection between its potentiality or proficiency and its purposes. You see, a person's power depends on his efficiency or competence to meet the demands rather the purposes of the other party. 
Apart from this, it also depends on the seniority of the purposes of the other party, which I just spoke about. Let me tell you how look if the severity is low that is to say if the other party is not to kin about the effectuation of purposes then suffice it to say the resultant power would not be that great. But if the severity is high the resultant power automatically becomes great. You might recollect that in the first part of this discussion, I had stated that religion should not be associated only with the idea of God. That is to say, it should not be thought of only as a divine or sacrosanct attribute. Rather, religion should be thought of as an important human attribute as well. I say this because it is religion that empowers humans to transcend their own physicality. That is to say, it gives them the opportunity to heighten their imagination to those worlds that are imperceivable, that are obscure, that they are likely to inhabit after their death. Now, this power of religion has both merits and demerits. Let me first come to the positive side. Well, the fact that humans can create their own world view helps them be adept enough to partly create their own world too. Eventually, with a whole wide range of world views and cultures, humans become more able to fight the different threats of the physical world and this consequently increase the chances of survival of their species. But there are the demerits too. When humans become increasingly aware that the cultural world they live in is actually delusory and misleading and that reality and truth are continuously being intermeddled. They realize the melancholy of their situation. Eventually, people are able to live through this state of existential insecurity only for a limited time period. And when this time expires, they are free to do anything that would liberate them from this depressing condition. So, what happens is whenever existential security becomes unsteady, humans try their best to set things right and keep them in place. But the point is this process of repairing and strengthening cannot always be executed humanly or by humans alone. There is an urgent need for superhuman reality and this is exactly where religion fits in the bill. 
you might wonder how well what religion does is that it offers salvation from all human impediments and imperfections including those found in the construction of their world view. This is how religion guarantees a steady and stable existential security that is very much needed for the continuity of the human species. Having discussed about existential security so far, let me make an important point here. See, whoever is capable to maintain this existential security is considered to be a possessor of symbolic power. But the reality is basically every one of us are believed to possess some extent of symbolic power because all of us rely on one another for preserving and restoring this security. It is only when one loses his way or can no longer hold on to his sense of existential security, certain experts like personal counselors can be turned to for guidance in the matter or the person might also resort to a religious dimension for help, thereby evincing time and again that in times of dilemma it is religion that is embarked upon and chosen over other forms of symbolic power. It is often believed that anything or anyone who can surpass our flaws, our imperfections, our bodies, our minds can also guarantee us of our world views. Here let me briefly speak of the French philosopher Descartes. Well, Descartes was of the few that God is the only perfect being who would never cheat on man and would never ever be dishonest with him. This determination greatly set up his thoughts and actions. Ultimately, Descartes became prophet and reached his worldview and found a new kind of energy in his understanding of divinity. So, how exactly can man reach God? Well, by praying perhaps, because praying is a medium that besides connecting an individual to the Almighty empowers him to continue with his life notwithstanding the circumstances he is in. In other words, by helping man to connect with the divine power, praying actually helps in maintaining a stable existential security. Many a time while praying, people indiscriminately follow the teachings they have been planted upon with, that is to say the religious capital. They amazed through the years that they believed would help them 
maintain their existential security. To restore this power, man uses a number of testifies ways of thinking and acting, be it acting in privacy as well. This power becomes social only when he meets other people who also reassure him of a divine reality in existence. Men being social beings and greatly dependent on one another, ultimately we find that it is the society that has got a major role to play when the question of maintenance of existential security comes into the forefront. Ever since human society came into being, it can be said that it has been characterized by a power struggle. This power struggle gave rise to the need of religiously authoritative figures who would give their decisions in case of religious perplexities and their decisions should be abided by. Generally, these religiously authoritative figures are those who are incurious about material and personal interests and therefore are believed to be in propinquity with the divine spirit. Well, generally speaking, these religious specialists are usually the priests who are believed to enjoy the patent with regard to the appropriation and institutionalization of religious power. Of course, priests mean they can range from clergymen to gurus to hermits and summons. The terms used might be different, but their source of power remains the same. The priest enjoys a position that lies between the general believers and the divinity, enjoys a special respect and treatment, wears special clothing, heralds a unique behavior might even practice chastity. In short, he is given a special rank in the society because of this special position which he enjoys. His answers to whatever religious questions he is asked are considered to be near perfect. Mention of the process of canonization must also be made here. Canonization you see is a process by which certain holy texts are firmly guaranteed and their content is considered to be the sole feasible option. It is thus that the position of the priest becomes more powerful because of the connection he owns with the religious texts. Thus, in such and other ways the priest exercises his religious command on behalf of the whole community. It is they who provide the superhuman guarantee to people's worldviews, thereby helping them maintain their existential security. But the sad part of the whole story is that in case 
he fails to guarantee this existential security to the general believers, he is stranded from his position and may even be thrown aside if a more competent competitor comes into the picture with his own group of followers. Religious power has a major impact on the advancement of culture. In this respect, even Max Weber had used the term cultur veditum to show the significance of religion in the advancement of culture as he believed that religious power is quite decisive in the evolution and progression of world views. In his The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, Weber writes about welfare one sect that is an appointed affinity between the ethics of Protestantism on the one hand and the attitude of the Western capitalism on the other hand. Note that these two aspects are believed to be interrelated with each other. Well, continuing with the subject, it is important to state that Protestantism not only cemented the capitalist worldview, but it had also endorsed rather attributed it with a supernatural essence. Among the Protestants, profit making was divinely consecrated and they believed in profit maximization as well. A characteristic that is in sharp contrast to the virtues of the Catholics. However, what is to be noted is that in both these cases, believers exercised power over themselves through their religious institutions. Another part is quite often neglected is the cultural importance of religion on the origins of the nuclear family. The more the clergy started ruling the roost in the institution of marriage by giving his divine blessings to the alliance between the man and the woman, the more their power over the family increased. Gradually, it is through the command of the clergy or the priests that the Catholic Church in Western societies became all powerful to the extent that it even enjoyed the upper hand in matters of marital and sexual ethics. In this broader sense, family ethics became sanctioned by such God's representatives on earth. It was only later that with the introduction of contraceptives and other means of existential security that people could take back the power over sexual conduct that they had once conferred upon these religious specialists. It is difficult to find religious power in pure form because it relies on and remains tied up with other forms of power like economic power, political power, sexual power and so on. This implies 
a possibility of the merging of religious power with such other forms of power as found in the power constellation. It can also be said that religious power gives rise to other forms of power since it has got the ability to sanction worldviews. For example, a priest can demand his followers to ascribe him with political power and perhaps economic power as well. On the contrary, religious power is often granted to someone who already has a distinguishing social presence. Note that this is exactly how religious power and the power of the religion can be differentiated. So you see, it is not only religious officials like the Pope who wields power, but others ranging from movie to military heroes can also be mentioned about. The German politician and Nazi leader Adolf Hitler being one of the best examples. Thus, you can see religious power and political power seem to be connected with one another. This kind of confluence often results in the rise of theocracy where the priests hold power, especially political power or caesaropapism, where the politicians dictate religious power. Many a time it is alleged that religious security is disappearing thanks to the various changes and consequences brought about by modernization. There were many processes like the enlightenment that brought along a wave of anti-religious hostility in Europe and other developing countries that needed strong resentment. The fact is people were not dispassionate or indifferent to the fruits of modernization and the range of different possibilities it ushered. Rather, they were frightened because they thought that the world view that secured their existential peace might just be wrecked. Their immediate need was a solution that would help them conform to the benefits of modernization, but at the same time would not hamper their religious boundaries. Therefore, what happened? is the religious power of the specialists increased because it was them who continued to guarantee existential security to man by different ways like maintaining group solidarity through their service to God and because people started following the tenets of this religious authorities, violence and crime could be prevented to a great extent. This is how modernization within the boundaries of religion can guarantee existential security, a stance that is not possible within the scope of secularization. In conclusion, all I would like to say is that the pristine requirement of existential security is mostly fulfilled by religion only. It would be adverse to find any other belief or practice that can successfully match up 
to the ways in which religion substantiates and bolsters the world view on which life, our life depends. Perhaps this is because it establishes a connection between world view and an entity so powerful that it surmounts all kinds of human imperfections and follies. That is why even though people quite often have tried to secure and ensure their existential security by other methods, these methods never seemed adequate enough to fulfill their requirements completely. It is religion to which they have time and again resorted to for the maintenance of their existential security and thereby that of their happiness and survival. With this we come to an end of the discussion on the topic religion and the idea of power. Thank you for attending the lecture. We will meet again in some other discussion on some other module.